Do you have any idea if um, Hunter Biden's laptop had anything to do with this investigation? Was it used? I can't recall being asked about it, to be honest with you. Um, but there's nothing about the, the situation that's being that's been filed that has a thing to do with the laptop. Obviously, whatever that stuff has been available to everyone in the United States for many years, sadly, I mean, I don't know how you'd feel about if everyone was disseminating the contents of your stolen phone. It wasn't stolen. He dropped it off. Uh, Hunter Biden's lawyer admitting he wasn't even asked about the infamous laptop, despite the damning evidence of alleged bribery, wire fraud, and foreign lobbying crimes, just to name a few. Our next guest predicted a sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden. Cash Patel served as deputy director of the National Intelligence under Donald Trump and joins us now. Cash, your thoughts about what looks like a plea deal with the, which would leave Hunter Biden out of prison? Well, good morning, Brian, and I wish I was here for you to call me out saying how wrong I got it, because as a former federal public defender and national security prosecutor, this case has singularly done more damage to the institution of justice than I've ever seen in my life. What do I mean by that? As a federal public defender, I handled hundreds of gun cases exactly like the one that Hunter Biden is supposedly being given a get-out-of-jail-free card on. And every single time a gun case was tied to a narcotics application or a justification, the average prison sentence was three to five years in federal prison. So why is it that he gets pretrial diversion, which almost never happens in federal court, based on the justification, and there's only one, that he is currently a drug addict. You must currently be a narcotics addict to receive justification for pretrial diversion. So what is it? He was a drug addict or he's one right now? I think the DOJ is being too cute by half because most people won't pick up on that. But that alone, not even the tax charge, to me is a total miscarriage of justice. And, and by the way, I mean, this is the second tax charge. He, somebody else paid a $2 million tax bill, and that's the tax rate of, of maybe 10%. A $1.5 million only owns $100,000. I mean, what kind of deal is that? Yeah. You don't get that off TurboTax. Uh, real quick, the bigger story is, was he, was he registered as a foreign agent when he was doing these international business deals? And where's that money? I mean, is that, what David, is that why David Weiss says he hasn't closed the investigation? Because perhaps he's looking into that? What do you think? I think it's the continued weaponization of DOJ by putting out that statement because Hunter's lawyer said he believes the case is resolved. And from a defense attorney and DOJ perspective, you don't close multiple investigations with one plea and say, oh, we're working on other stuff. But allowing the statement to go out that says the investigation is ongoing, irrespective of what the defense attorney says, because his job is to champion his client, uh, irrespective of that, you must mm. issue this statement if you're the DOJ to say, Congress, we have an ongoing matter. It doesn't matter how many subpoenas you send us. We are never going to give right. you the documents. You're never getting the 1023 on bribery. And now we know about audio recordings and the lies that Chris Ray and Merrick Garland told Congress, and they're going to steamroll right over them right. with this ongoing investigation. So James concept. Comer is chairman of oversight, and, he, uh, and uh, the weaponization of government is Jim Jordan. And he's trying to get to the bottom of mm -hmm. all these whistleblowers who keep coming forward and talking about the bribery that went on. Yeah. Uh, during when, when uh, Joe Biden was vice president and afterwards. Here's Comer on the frustration with the FBI. Listen. Unfortunately, we saw a lot of redactions in these documents. I would estimate that 55 to 60 percent of the two documents were redacted. The two documents that they provided me today that were heavily redacted, the one thing that wasn't redacted was the date, and both dates were 2017. So I asked them to bring wow. me the 2018 one, and it's just a complete waste of my time. It's another example of the FBI stalling, stonewalling, doing everything they can to obstruct the House Oversight Committee's credible investigation of Biden bribery. You understand the frustration? What, what, I mean, what is, where does he go from here if they're going to keep redacting the most important parts of these whistleblower statements? I completely understand the frustration. As a chief investigator for Russiagate, Chairman Nunes and I issued 17 subpoenas and went through this exact measure. I appreciate where Comer and Jordan are going, but here's what they have to do. We did it. you got to fence the money. It's a concept in Congress that the majority can issue to take the money. And I'm not saying defund the entire FBI and GOJ, but you take their fancy toys. You take the money paying for Chris Ray's private-funded private jet. You take the money for their 10 new Escalades. You take the money for their new buildings. And that is the only thing 
thing that will get these government gangsters to bend the knee to the constitutional oversight of Congress. Remember, these documents, yes, are for the members of Congress, but for the American people first and foremost. And if they continue to slow roll them by sending them letters and asking them politely and playing these redaction games, it's not going to get us anywhere. We need to destroy this two-tier system of justice. Have cash, with have these you documents. told James Comer this? I've said it publicly uh, probably a thousand times, and I'll continue to say it until we get resolved. Yeah, I know one thing. They're not going to fund that new building uh, with the FBI. Uh, that's one thing. But the private jet and all the other things would be uh, fascinating to see how they react. Uh, Cash Patel, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Have a good morning. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.